for the day. And uh, to that end, uh, so I think to begin, I need to offer some very specific thanks. Um, first, I'm going to just do the, the, the requisite ritual that all of us in the arts understand so well. I would like to thank our funders. <laughs> and so specifically by name, the funders for this event include the Stephen Trask Lecture Series Fund, Rochelle Cahoon, the Vice President for Campus Life, the Humanities Council, the Center for Collaborative History, Department of English, and Programs in American Studies, Gender and Sexuality Studies, Latino Studies, and Latin American Studies, 
Those are the entities at Princeton who provide the financial subsidy for our work here today. I also want to thank uh, Danielle Dennis and her crew as the, as the venue managers of the Lewis Arts Complex, Jane Cox, the director of the theater program, Joseph Fonseca, the administrative, the academic assistant in the program in theater, and the incredible staff of the Lewis Center Arts Complex, this incredible staff that has made making this making this day a day of hospitality a chance for us to introduce you to our new home we just moved in here uh, we just moved in here about eight months ago we're still learning what, where the doors are and it's an incredible opportunity when you have uh, this uh, when, you, when you know that company is coming it's a great opportunity to figure out how to tune into how we're hospitable and one of the things I love about working at Princeton is the staff that runs everything here, you'll encounter them in different places throughout the day, are just so dedicated to making sure that the work, that this is a, this is a, a, is a hive of activity for really searching and exciting creative action. So, and um, I mentioned her name already, but I do want to give a special shout out to Jane Cox. I'm not sure if she's within sight. Jane Cox is the director of the program in theater. Um, we'll see her a couple times during the day. It's through her support, along with the support of Marion Young, uh, the administrative director of the Lewis Center, and Michael Cadden, the chair of the Lewis Center. When I said um, three years ago that I said, I just told a bunch of people in Chicago at Carnival that we're doing a symposium in 2018. And they said, okay. <laughs> and they built, and we built that into our sense of purpose for what the organization was doing over the subsequent three years. And indeed, the program in theater, my colleagues Bob Sandberg, Jane Cox, Helena Arauz, we decided that when we built the season for this year, we knew that this was one of our temples, one of the most important things we'd be doing. And so the opportunity for me to have this house full of my Latino teatro familia feels really special. I don't know any other theater program in the country where I would have been able to have the support to make this happen the way it is now. So thank you for being here, to realizing, to, to allowing my community here at Princeton to see my two communities come together. And that is in some ways what I always envisioned and hoped, and those of you on the committee, Abigail Vega, and Garcia Romero, Mictalia Cruz, Gwendolyn Alker, Gina Sandy Diaz, uh, Cristina Leon, Olga Sanchez, SS, Olga SS, um, and, uh, and others who contributed to this work. You'll, they, and then a lot of my collaborators here at Princeton have said, I always said that I imagined this convening as a, in the style of a family reunion. You know, when we come together to honor a particular thread of heritage, a particular thread of tradition, uh, because we have a connection to one of our many surnames, and we're gathering around that right there, and when we go to a family gathering, one of the things that, and especially a family reunion, one of the great gifts is we get to meet people we didn't know we were connected to. That the day is a day of saying, this is your familia. This is who you're connected to, even if you never met them. Even if you don't have a lot of common. There's something that brought you here together. And what I'd like us to approach this day to day, as we get to know each other, as we encounter each other in different ways, is understanding that we were all brought here because of some meaningful connection to Maria Karin Fornes. Some connection in our practice, in ourselves, that drew to Fornes is what also drew us to this, to this gathering here today. And so as you meet people, know that we already have something in common, that we care about Maria Karin Fornes and her legacy. And so today, in the spirit of family reunion, and in the spirit, the spirit of the original definition of symposium, where, you, where it's not a bunch of people sitting on a panel talking about stuff, but you're having a serious conversation, you have performance, you have food, you have gathering, you're dancing, perhaps. Uh, what this idea is, let's have a family reunion, let's get to know each other, and let's get to see who's in the mix and who's in the game to elevate and celebrate and amplify the legacy of Maria Irene Flores. So thanks again for being here. It's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to welcome you to this building and to this space and to Princeton. And with that, I'd like to welcome to the stage uh, uh, Olga, who will be uh, shepherding us forward. It's a bit of a step up.
It's also bad. <laughs> Today, the Maria Irene Bornes Institute Symposium is a manifestation of an intention, of an idea that was spoken, that was conceived and spoken aloud by Lisa Cortes and Lou Moreno back in 2013 in Boston to which Brian Herrera committed himself, and along with Anne Garcia Romero, Vidalia Cruz, Georgina Escobar, and Abigail Vega, has led the way from taking this idea to this manifestation, this presence, all of us here together, and it's quite astonishing, um, and it's, it's incredibly great. Briefly, I just want to acknowledge that today, we are embracing the past, what La Maestra Fornes has contributed to our art, to our lives. We're asking also what her work and her influence means for the future. But perhaps most importantly, and in the spirit of La Maestra, and echoing perhaps what Brian was saying as well about being here, is about embracing the present, this moment, this encounter with each other. The creative impulse of the moment, we have these wonderful workshops and cafecitos, these conversations, these opportunities to be here and not question, not judge, simply allow what emerges to be. Save judgment for another day. I imagine most of you have looked at today's remarkable offerings and selected where you'd like to spend your time. Just Briefly, this is the path for today. We have, after this morning session at 11.15, either a cafecito or a performance um, or a workshop. Then we have lunch at 1 o'clock. Then another session, again, cafecito, workshop, performance, or film. And then we'll all join back here again at 4 o'clock and, and bring what, what bubbled up, what emerged, to share with each other, again, as, as one large community. Please be sure to visit the Living Legacy space on the second floor. There are people like Lou, um, like Lisa, who are such a part of this but could not be here in person today, but who have sent along their thoughts, their testimonials, their uh, recollections, their what inspired them about, about working with La Maestra. And, uh, and that's on the second floor. Please share that space and please contribute to that space. Please leave your recollections, your thoughts in some kind of written or drawn or some way engage in that. That's, that's part of the recollection and part of the moving forward. The living legacy installation on the second floor. When you go up, it's that way to the right, off the elevator. Um, for the moment, now, uh, we're going to do what we've been calling as a planning committee, a wellness check-in. It's okay, we're not going to but we are. Vidalia <laughs> 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 okay. um, Cruz will let us know about La Maestra. Brian Herrera will report on the current and, and ongoing productions of her work. Anne Garcia uh, Romero will report on some of the pedagogical initiatives that are at play. And Gwendolyn Alker will let us know about recent and current scholarship. Um, first, I'd like to welcome Vidalia. So she has late stage uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, and um, you know she's mostly blind and pretty much deaf. But if you put a, some earphones on her and some really loud music, sometimes she'll move. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she's still got the rhythm in her, so she's still with us. 
um, and they're still her soul there. So it'd be great if you guys all went with cell phone because it's good just to spend time and hold her hand and brush her hair, just to stay connected to the soul that is still there. Um, that's my check. Thank you. here to uh, talk about, it's just sort of one of the traditions in our wellness check is just and part of the goal of the Fortnite Institute is to sort of try to keep track of where the action is happening and what, what's going on with, with Fortnite's work in a variety of different ways. And one of those ways is productions. And uh, so thanks to Ann Garcia Romero's uh, research assistant, we have a very easily used, we, we have a list. Uh, we know that there were 54 um, productions of seven Fornes plays since 2015. So um, most of those productions, there's a handful of productions of uh, Conduct of Life, of the Danube, of, uh, of Sarita, of Springtime, um, but most of those productions, about 20 or so each, have been of Mud and of Bethu and her friends. Um, most of those productions, I would say about 50, I'm not, I don't have the exact count, but somewhere around 50 of the 54 have been staged by educational institutions. So as an educator and as theater educators, we are also, we have a unique, uh, sometimes unique space on a, on a university campus of simultaneously being an academic unit and a production organization. One of the, it's heartening to see that we in the academy have taken that on, but I do think we've also, I can say that there, through the Chisme circuit, the, the gossip circuit, there, there's many stories that can be circulated around the rooms today of major theaters being inclined to consider producing Irene and getting close and falling in love with conduct or mud or, or um, any of the works and then saying, yeah, but is there another one? There's kind of a sort of a reluctance to take the leap into major scale productions, with the exception of Signature's production of Down Drowning a year a few years ago. There haven't been a major uh, major production of Fornes' work um, uh, in a sort of the top, the, the highest profile of, of regional theaters. So it's I think there's work to be done among productions, and I do think that it's great that the Academy is keeping the active life of what man is alive in the, in the world of students, but uh, 54 in three years is great, but could be much, much better. And so now I turn it over to Gwendolyn or Anne. Or Gwendolyn or Anne. Well, Gwendolyn <laughs> or Anne will be coming to them. So they'll come at the same time, and then they will do it out between.
So it's a super useful book. I just use it, you know, as like a guide. It has a great uh, appendix in the back of all of the production histories. And when that was produced, I think one thing that was really important about that contribution was that up until um, 2012, when Scott published this, there hasn't been much scholarship done on her later work. And I think that Scott really was committed to uh, creating a very uh, interesting and engaged analysis of the later work. Because we all know that everybody, like Brian says, they produce love, they produce conduct, they produce springtime. Um, but people don't always look so much at the later work. So if you're interested in learning more about the later work and what plays you could stage it in your institutions from her later canon, that's a really good resource guide to have. Um, something else I wanted to point out uh, was Anne Garcia Romero's book, and it's right here. Um, Anne uh, published uh, The Fornes Frame, Contemporary Latina Playwrights and the Legacy of Maria Irene Fornes in 2016. Um, that was in 2016. Um, that was in 2016.